Ever want to know the secret to how to gather fabric or need to know how to make ruffles? Well, today I'm going to show you my fail-proof method on how to gather fabric using any sewing machine. Hi guys, it's Hila here from Saturday Night Stitch and thank you for tuning in. So, I have always hated gathering fabric. Despite my love of flowy maxi dresses and full skirts, gathering fabrics was one of those things that actually uh, took me quite a long time to find something that worked for me that didn't have me pulling my hair out And so this is what I'm going to share with you today So I recorded this when I was sewing up my Breda 4 2019 number 120 dress and it had rectangular pieces that had to be gathered and sewn onto the hem So this is my fabric, which is a cotton and steel um, broadcloth and I've put it up to my sewing machine and you can see here I'm using a vintage sewing machine It's a really old sewing machine so you can use any sewing machine with this method So I start off by sewing long gathering stitches at three separate points along the seam that is going to be gathered So you can see there I've marked them and always remember you gotta increase your stitch length my maximum stitch length is five so that is the one that I have gone with and make sure that you've got nice long tails once you've made sure that you've got nice long thread tails then go ahead and run that first line of stitching through the sewing machine and then do your second line of stitching where you have marked it and do your third line of stitching so you can see on there I've got the three lines of stitching they're not even they don't have to be perfectly even guys so long as they can pull the fabric together that is what matters the next step is to yank on those thread tails this is why it is important to make sure that you have got nice long thread tails because the more thread you have to play around with the less likely you are to snap that thread tail and this is the other advantage of actually using three lines of gathering stitches because when you only have two lines and you're pulling at those thread chain uh, the thread tails if one of them snaps, that's it. Your gathering is ruined. You have to go back to the sewing machine. And trust me, this has happened to me so many times. But I have found that when I use three gathering stitching lines, that there is less likely chance of a thread snapping. And even when one does snap, I still have two and I can still continue with the gathering. So you can see there, you pull on those thread tails and you start gathering up the fabric and then you're spreading out the gathered, the gathers. This is the bit that probably takes the longest depending on the fullness of the pattern. So if the pattern requires more fullness, you're going to have more gathers to spread around and make sure that they look neat. And if it doesn't have that many, obviously it's less time. Unfortunately, my pattern requires a lot of fullness in the flounces, so there is a lot of gathering. But I just wanted to quickly show you that my gathering stitches are about a quarter of an inch apart each and that's because my vintage sewing machine has got a sewing machine foot that's about a quarter inch wide so that makes it easier for me to just work with um, a quarter inch and then a half inch and then three quarters of an inch now when it comes to actually attaching your gathered piece of fabric to the non gathered piece of fabric this is another area that used to cause me a lot of headaches but I found that if I started sewing my gathering stitches about a seam allowance away from the end of the seam that really helped with making sure that I got my gathering right. And also marking the center points on both pattern pieces that need to be attached together really helped because then I could use those as anchor points. So you can see there where I started sewing about a half an inch away from the edge of the seam and I'm just going to uh, pin that to the skirt to the front skirt portion that is Ungathered so I very rarely use pins in my sewing um, But this is one of the few times that I would probably use a pin or wonder clips which are actually my preferred method of um, Holding fabric pieces together rather than pins. I do love my wonder clips and I find them very very useful So there you see I'm just lining up the seam to the gathered flounce and I find that this really helps me 
to see where there's too much gathering and where I need to spread out the gathering a little bit more. Again, this process does take a long time, but the more you do it, the better and the more efficient you get at actually um, making sure that you spread out your gathers evenly and attaching them to the non-gathered part of your pattern. With this particular pattern, I actually cut the hem flounces along the selvage edge so that I could incorporate that lovely selvage into the hem. This is something that I like to do with what I like to call my precious fabrics or the designer fabrics. So my hem is literally just going to be like that so that the selvage is visible. And I do enjoy that as a feature of working with some of these nicer art gallery style fabrics or the cotton and steel fabrics. So the next thing is to take it back to the sewing machine, bob it under your, your needle and sew it up. I always sew mine with the ungathered piece at the bottom and there you have it. It's not perfect but it's a lot better than the problems that I used to have with the um, two two strand gathering technique but th this seems to have worked for me and I just wanted to share with you how I actually do my gathering so the next thing would be to actually serge your seam press it and then do some top stitching um, just to anchor that seam and that's something that I do and there you have it guys that is how to gather fabric or how to make ruffles in fabric and this is the finished garment again I showed you it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect when you're doing your stitch lining what matters is that you can actually do the gathering and in the end you have a lovely dress so thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this useful. And if you did, do give it a big thumbs up down below. If you haven't already, do subscribe for new sewing related videos every week. Until I see you next time, happy sewing. Bye.